What's up, all? Today I'm going to be doing something a little bit different. Uh, I'm going to be recording uh, like a tutorial guide aimed at new players. Um, I'm going to go through like everything, all the the buttons as I go through and, you know, some of the just basic stuff uh, really geared towards people who are just starting out. I'm and I'm uh, I am playing on the on the stable version uh, version thirty one. So if you're new to the game, Minotaur Berserker I think is like probably the most often recommended starting uh, combo. It's a strong combo. It allows you to uh, kind of digest a portion of the game without, like, moving, you know, learning about magic. Because it is a big game. There's a lot to learn. And this is, I mean, this is how I learned as well as how a lot of people learned. is just by kind of, you know, just learning melee first. Like, just straight melee. So, pick Minotaur Berserker. I think, um... I'm going to start with an axe. That's probably the most beginner-friendly weapon. Uh, I can't promise we'll stick with axe the whole game, but it's it's the most likely when you start with it that you will end up with it. But this game, it really depends on, on what you find. So when we start out, this is the, uh, this is the skill screen. Basically, you can... Each skill has this corresponding letter that you can, you know, turn on or off. Uh, and you have your apps here, which is how good you are at each skill. So the higher the number, the better. The higher the number, the less you'll, uh, the less experience you'll need to to level it up. Usually with a melee guy, the first two skills you're going to focus on are fighting and your weapon skill. And... Uh, You can like manually turn off and on each each skill. Usually I just hold down shift and hit the letter. So if you have like a bunch of skills all on and you just want to do one skill and I'm just going to start with axes, I'll just hit shift C and it'll just only highlight that one skill. I always put it in a uh, cost view. Like you can see here it, it if you hit forward slash it'll take you through like you know, there's an auto mode. I recommend manual mode. And uh, and I recommend cost view. Like, you can toggle, like, you know, just... There's different things where you can just kind of assign, uh, like, if you want to do, like, a ratio of a bunch of different skills. But I pretty much always train one at one, one skill at once, and I always use cost view. <clears throat> and cost view is basically a ratio. Like, um... Meaning, like, if the cost is 2.8 for axes and the cost is 2.8 for fighting, then they are, like, uh, an equal amount of XP will gain you a level of, of axes as fighting. Whereas, like, you know, uh, stealth cost 1.2, it would cost much less to get one level of stealth. You know, it would cost less than half the amount of experience to get one level of stealth as a level of axes. Okay, so I'm going to start off by going to, like, six axes. So I'm going to hit the equal sign, select axes, and uh, set the target to six. So basically, it'll when I hit six, this skill menu will pop up, and it'll let me uh, choose a different skill. So I'll go through the buttons as we move along. Uh, it's kind of information overload if you just kind of list all the buttons. But if you hit a uh, question mark, question mark, it'll bring up this screen, which kind of gives you like a basic, uh, you know, basic rundown of all the, of all the, uh, you know, keys. But like the basic important ones are I for inventory. You can see we start with an axe and animal skin. Uh, shift five gives you like kind of like a character sheet 
and it'll show you like your resists, like your basic stats and what you're wearing, you know, um, what your, like, uh, if you have any mutations or anything like that, it's just kind of like a quick rundown. All right, so the the first keys that are best to know is uh, O, which is Auto Explore. That'll kind of like move you around the map until you run into something. And uh, Tab, which attacks uh, the nearest target. Okay, so... Let's start out. I'm going to hit O to uh, auto explore. You can see it kind of, it moves you, it moved me to like the nearest thing and you can see the footsteps. It kind of showed you which way you traveled. So now you can see I automatically picked up these scrolls during my inventory. <clears throat> I got a frilled lizard. I'm going to... It's very tempting. When you first start playing, you pretty much just run toward everything to attack. Uh, which opens up new tiles of line of sight. It's much less safe than um, letting things move toward you. So what I'm going to do is just hit period, which uh, makes me just wait a turn until the thing comes toward me. And then you hit tab to attack. And you can see I killed it. Trog accepted my kill. And I'll go through what, what Trog does as it... Uh, comes along you can hit the uh, carrot sign shift six to bring up your god uh, screen and it'll tell you like what what your god does like you can see trog currently gives me the ability to berserk at this level of piety and then as i move up it'll give me uh further abilities that we'll go through so this is the overview kind of a rundown of Trog's powers and then what Trog doesn't like. Pretty much, as long as you don't mess around with spells, uh, you'll be fine. If I hit A for abilities, you can see the only two abilities I have, Renounce Religion, don't recommend that, and Berserk, which makes you uh, faster and stronger for a short amount of time and then eventually slow. It's kind of like the re part of the reason Trog is so strong is because you just start with something like starting with abilities is is very powerful in this game. So again, and even safer than just waiting is just moving back. Like pulling things back is uh is big in this game. Like when you encounter something Going into new territory and, like, opening up squares where more monsters can be is a recipe for, for getting into trouble. Moving backwards is, is like, the safest thing you can do. So you can see this guy threw a stone. Uh, one thing you can do is whenever you encounter a, a new enemy and you're not sure what it does, you can hit X, which will give you this cursor. And then you highlight the monster and hit V. And that'll give you, like, a, a rundown of, of the monster. So you can see how much damage it does. And you can see it's quivering stones. So I'm going to do, I'm going to back up. Move here and break line of sight. And then just wait for him. So he doesn't just throw rocks at me while I wait. Okay, and I'm going to move toward him. Just because he has rocks. And then you can move over them. If you hit uh, apostrophe, you can pick up anything you want or, like, see what's on the ground. Okay, there's another guy. The first floor of dungeon is usually pretty safe for a Minotaur Berserker. Like, you really shouldn't die unless you run into somebody with a crazy weapon. Okay, we found a ringmail of Poison and Resist. I'm pretty much... Uh, as as a Minotaur Berserker, you're going to wear the heaviest armor you find. And uh, this has Poison Resist, which is even nicer. Uh, D for drop. And we're going to drop this animal skin. Uh, 
So you can see we have multiple enemies on the screen. We're going to move backward. The safest thing you can do when there's more than one enemy on the screen is fight it in a corridor like this so that um, you're only being attacked by one enemy at a time. That's a tactic you'll just use throughout the game in your crawl playing career is fighting in corridors. Um, you know, axes, like the the attribute that axes have is that they, they attack um, all around you. Like whatever direction, if you say, you know, uh, whatever, if there's multiple enemies and you push in a direction against a monster, it'll do more damage to him and less damage to the surrounding guys. But there's kind of a, I think there might be a, um, a temptation to get surrounded so that you can get quote value out of your ax, but it's much better to, uh, to fight things one versus one so they can't gang up on you. Okay. Here's a couple guys. We're going to. Pull them back. This is a shaft right here. Um, you if if something steps on it, they have a chance of falling through. So. If you do run into like a tough enemy and there's a shaft nearby and you don't think you can kill it, you can pull back through that and it and has a, a possibility of getting shafted down to the next floor or two. You can also use it as a one-way stairway. I don't recommend that. It's, it's usually pretty dangerous unless you're in dire straits and you really need to escape. Okay, so we found a shop. Um, we don't have gold to buy anything. I'm going to put everything on my shopping list. Basically, if you can highlight everything, which you can do by just pressing the letters, but in, uh, a fast way to just highlight everything is just hit asterisk. You can see everything's highlighted now. And then hit money sign, and it puts it all on your shopping list. Uh, first thing I would buy here, probably heal wounds. And now... If I hit a uh, money sign, it brings up my shopping list and it, it contains all the things. Hey, what's up, said no one? Welcome. Okay, got these boomerangs. I recommend picking up uh, any projectiles like that. Okay, so we're done exploring. Uh, so here's, at the end of every level, before you go down to the next one, I recommend uh, doing two things. Uh, one, control F, which is your search function. And you can search for anything. Like if you want to search for armor, say, like, you know, Type in arm, armor, and it'll show you all the armor you've found so far in the entire game. You know, you can do that with weapons. You can do that with anything, if you're looking for something in particular. At the end of any particular level, though, use the search function and just type in a period. And it'll show you everything that's on that particular floor. Um, this is something I do at the end of every floor after I clear it, just to make sure I didn't miss anything. Okay, so we didn't... Didn't really miss anything of importance. And then the other thing you want to do is just kind of take a look at your inventory and see what you found. Like, I'll, I'll like, make sure I didn't pick up any jewelry. I'll read. And, uh, and read any, any scroll stacks. Any, any amount of scrolls above one, you want to read them. You want to get things ID'd. Because, like, reading one will always, uh, ID it. 
And in this game, you really want to have, it's not, it's really not about saving. It's about having options. You really don't want to die with unID'd uh, consumables. Okay, so we found Scroll of Poison. Alright, that's about it for this level, I think. Um, so an easy way to go down, or to any level, is Control g for Go. And then you can just hit um, Greater Than Sign. Basically the, the same button that makes you go downstairs. Control d Down will make you go downstairs. Okay, bats are anything batty, like bats, that have batty movement. The best way to do to to deal with them is to move backwards and attack instead of trying to chase them down. Here we have an adder. Adders are very dangerous. Uh, D2 is pretty much like one of the most dangerous levels of the game, honestly, um, as far as like how many resources you have and how dangerous the enemies can be. But uh, just... Blindly tabbing into adders. I mean, I have resist poison, so I'm I'm probably fine anyway. But uh, adders are like one of the most common killers. I think they might be number two or three after like gnolls. So you really want to just use what you have. I have boomerangs. I'm gonna throw them at this guy. Just I loosened them up a little bit before he gets here. All right. So we got to level three. You can see it's asking us. What we want to buff, um, we're always going to take strength pretty much. Maybe we take int at some point. You know, it's sup our int is super low, and uh, it can be worth it sometimes to take int once just to so we don't die to stat drain at some point. Or you know, we can use a piece of gear that has a negative uh, int modifier. But we're definitely going to take strength here. <clears throat> Increases your damage, makes you better at using heavy armor. I'm going to pick this up. Even though, probably not going to use it. Okay, so you can see, um, we gained uh, Trog Piety. It says, you can now call upon Trog for regen and willpower. If you hit A for abilities, you'll see it right here. And these abilities are strictly based off your piety. Um, most god abilities are based off invocations. Trog doesn't work like that. Trog is just... You don't have to train any skills. You just have to have more piety. And it will uh, lower the failure rate and, and make it stronger. So I'm actually going to look at the staff. Ooh, there's Terrence. Terrence is fine. Like For a lot of characters, they might not be able to deal with him at this point. But we have Berserk. What you want to avoid is, like, moving toward him or berserking anywhere near unexplored territory. Because if it runs out and then something else strong comes in, then you die. So what we're going to do is spend some time pulling him back toward the stairs. This is the safest way to do it. I'm going to hit him with some boomerangs. And then... Well, actually, let's XV him first, just to take a look at why I'm I'm being cautious. You can see, like, he's just a little bit stronger than the stuff we've fought so far. You know, he's got... He hits for 12. I only have 31 HP. Um, it gives you all the... The kind of info here. You know, evades 33% of the time. Hits you 60% of the time. So, if he high rolls and you low roll, you could get into trouble very easily against this guy. Um, facing him on D2. So, we're going to hit A for abilities. You can see we have Berserk locked and loaded. I'm going to use that. We're now Berserk. You can see the Berserk status right here. If you highlight it, it tells you everything it does. Hasted, deals increased damage, increased health. The downside is you can't do anything else. You can't read scrolls. You can't, uh, you know... Basically, all you can do is attack and move and, uh, like, switch weapons. But we are very strong, so. Kill Terrence. And now you can see 
berserk is over we have the negative berserk status meaning we can't berserk again until this is gone and we're slow so that's why you want to be near the stairs and not just off in the wilderness so i'm just going to hit five five is rest to rest all this stuff off i'm going to pick up this chain mail although i think um so if you uh if you ch pick the chain mail It'll show you what, like, it'll show you all its properties, but it also will show you, like, the AC difference when you wear it. You can see it right here. It goes from 5 to 8. I think for now I'm just going to keep on the ring mail with the poison resist. There's an uh, altar to, to a god, Gozag. I'm going to, ooh, shoot, that guy just hit me with a javelin. That guy's very dangerous. So if we XV this guy... Before you even V, if you just X, you can see he's wearing a ring of protection. Oh, ring of protection from fire, and he's quibbling javelins, which are very dangerous. In this game, when, when monsters have projectiles, they don't run out. They just can kind of keep firing at you, so you can't like just run around until they, until they run out. So what I'm going to do is um, move out of line of sight. That's really against things with projectiles that you plan on killing. You, you want to always get out of line of sight if you can first. And if you're not sure, like, because I can clearly see that Southwest is out of sight, but let's say you're not sure if that's out of sight. I X, I go to him. I hit E for exclusion. And uh, what exclusion does is it won't let you walk. Um, it won't let you auto travel or move in without prompting into his area of line of sight. It's really good if you happen to run into some, if you see something, but you don't wake it up and it's sleeping, you can exclude it. Or if you want to exclude whatever, you want to exclude like an area just because it's dangerous. But it's also good for seeing line of sight. You can even exclude yourself to see line of sight of your own character. But yeah, we're going to, uh, if you exclude him, you can see clearly like Southwest is out of his line of sight, so... And then hitting uh, E again will just exclude that one tile, which is useful for, like, staircases and, and doors. So we're going to do that. I'm going to... Actually, you know what? I'm going to just move back to the staircase, go up, and rest. Yeah. Let's go to full health. So we're back to him. I'm going to move... Southeast, break line of sight, wait until he comes to us, and then move toward him. Okay, and now we have some javelins. Javelins are really good. They're projectiles that pierce through uh, enemies, so they can't be blocked by shields. If there's, like, two guys in a row, it, it'll hit both of them or has a chance to hit both of them. They're uh, they're good projectiles, especially once you start training throwing. We have a ring of protection from fire. Shift P will bring up the uh, put on jewelry uh, prompt, and we're gonna put that on. Okay, so we hit our our um, skill target for axes, brought it up to six. Uh, I'm going to train a little bit of fighting now. You can see, like, axes cost 4.9, fighting costs 2.8, so fighting is a little bit cheaper. There's no, like, I wouldn't, don't fret too much about skilling. Um, it's not going to be the thing that kills you unless you really train wreck it. It's really a tactical game, but you just kind of try to get it pretty much right, and you'll be fine. And early on, you just always want to train your your weapon skill and fighting for the first couple floors. That's pretty much all you're going to be training. Okay, we reached the end. Control F period. I don't see anything. We do have a couple scroll stacks. Let's read those. 
Okay, we found a scroll of teleport. Basically, scroll of teleport sounds like what it does. You read it, two to five turns later, you, you go somewhere random. Okay, we found identify. Um, people, like, different people do different things. Some people do potions first. I always ID my scrolls first. Most of your panic buttons are, are scrolls. So, you know, I like having, like, scroll of teleport, scroll of fear, uh, butterflies, summoning, like, blink. All these things are, are very good to have ID'd for, uh, for sticky situations. And always, I always, you know, you start, since you're going to be reading, um, read IDing stacks, I always ID the singletons first. Okay, we found amnesia. We don't need that. That's for spells. Brand weapon. Okay. I'm going to hang on to that till I find a better weapon than my uh, hand axe. Oh, we found a sling. Normally, this is something like a weapon like this. Um, I would use it and just swap back and forth. Like, you know, when things are far away, use the sling and then switch to the axe. Unfortunately, it has a drain property, which means when you remove it, you get drained. So it's not something I can, you know, uh, swap between. I mean, I could use it, like, just straight up use it. It is, like, a good weapon. But, um... I don't think I want to go range on this character. I mean, I could just use it and not train it. That's also an option, I suppose. But I don't want to... Range weapons key off decks. I'm clearly, like, way more strength than decks. And, uh... And yeah, for the purposes of this video, I don't think I want to, like, move in on anything, move in on range, necessarily. But just to show you, I'm going to, um... So you see I have a sling and I have a and I have the weapon I'm using the axe. Currently the sling is on letter F. So one thing you can do is if you hit equals and you know this prompt comes up adjust item spells abilities, you hit I, select the sling and then adjust it to B. Right? Now if you hit apostrophe, if you look up here where my hand axe is, if you hit apostrophe, it'll quick switch to whatever you have set to be, so to go to the sling. And I can keep hitting it to go back and forth. It's very useful if you have either, like, two weapons of a of the same type that you want to switch between for different types of enemies, or something like this where you want to, like, use the sling, and then when they get close, use the axe. So you could, like, fire, quick switch to hand axe, which only, you know, it takes half a turn, and then attack. Okay, there's Sigmund. Sigmund is one of the most dangerous enemies. Um, I mean, he's the most dangerous unique in the game. He has the highest, like, kill ratio in the game. He just immediately went invisible. But uh, just to show you... So, if you ever want to look up an... Like, he's invisible, so I can't XV him. But if you ever want to look up uh, a monster or anything in the game, you hit question mark. And then forward slash. It'll bring this up. This uh, screen where you just pick the type of thing you want to learn about. So M for monster. Sigmund. And it'll bring up his, you know, his info card right here. But this is why he's so dangerous. is because, like, invisible. So, like, much harder to hit if you can't see him. Confuse. Confuse is very bad for you. <laughs> and uh, he's just full of things that are bad for you. Like, he's got range spells. He confuses you. He's invisible. You know, he's got a, he's got a pole arm. So, the trick to this game, 
one of the tricks to this game is when something dangerous happens, don't don't start moving fast. Like, uh, think about what you want to do, really. And the first thing you generally want to do when Sigmund is in uh, your line of sight, or you're in his line of sight, well, you want to break line of sight, which I can't really do, because there's no, you know, I can move backward, but he can just move forward. So... The first thing I'm going to do is Trod's Hand. It increases my willpower. So, just to show you the... If you look at if you look at Sigmund, you see how he has a 53% chance to confuse, right? So, I'm going to Trog's Hand. You see, it went all the way down to 3%. That's part of why Trog's Hand is so good. It gives you increased regen, but it also is like, it's just free willpower. Like, you really don't have to, you gain a little bit of willpower as you level up, but otherwise you have to find willpower on, on gear or jewelry. Trog just gives you innate willpower to the point where you really don't need any additional, uh, effectively. Alright, I am gonna back up. I don't think I want to fight Invisible Sigmund, but we'll see. You know, if I'm Berserk, I could probably take him. But I'm going to just kind of move backward toward the stairs. Okay, he turned me into a bat. That's fine. It actually makes me much faster and easier to escape. <clears throat> he has a, a wand of polymorph on top of all his normal abilities. so So that's fun. A uh, quick way to get to other staircases, if you hit Shift X, it brings up this screen, which is kind of the move around the map fast screen. And then you can hit the going downstairs button, the greater than sign, to toggle between all the staircases. And if you use the other, you know, the less than button, it'll bring you to the up staircases. But yeah, we're going to pick a different staircase um, so we don't just go right back down into Sigmund's clutches. Let's switch back to the axe. So I'm not against fighting Sigmund with a Berserker at this point, but I'm okay avoiding him too. And if I am going to fight him, I'm going to just wait for a better situation. I'm not going to try to force it. Okay, this is a Barmadier Beetle. These things are pretty dangerous early, especially if you don't know how they work. Like, they're not, they're not too, like, uh, beefy or anything, but this... This Pyre Arrow ability, definitely check that out, because it basically sets you on fire, and if you don't move, you will die very quickly without resist fire, especially. So when you get put on fire, you need to move around. Uh, I'm going to throw boomerangs at him. Okay, see I'm on fire? Yeah, you want to move when that happens, and it's not too bad. But if you stay in one place, uh, you'll die rather quickly. You can see you have plants. Plants, they're basically like killable obstacles. Like if you hit them, they'll eventually wither and die of their own accord. Like you see, I'll just hit these two and then move and you see they start to die. It's a faded altar. This is like an altar that, not that we're going to be using this, but it's an altar that has a bunch of, it has uh, three different choices. And you can get one of the, three different choices of gods and you can get one at random. Okay, we got an ID scroll. Let's check this out. Enchant armor. We'll be using enchant armor if we get any um, auxiliary pieces of armor. Okay, I think I'm going to keep training fighting. Um, I don't... I don't particularly like going like all in on the axe training when I haven't even... when I'm still using my starting weapon. I'm going to hold off and see what I find. Minotaur's apps are so good that you can go with, like, you can go with any weapon you find. And axes also cross-train with, uh, with maces. So, like you can see, I see a guy using a, a flail. I'm probably going to start using that. It's, it's, a it's a tier up from hand axe. 
Let's pull these guys back into this corridor. Anytime you you find stuff like this, like like orcs, there's a lot of weapons like orcs and oles. They come in packs. Um, you want to pull them back and fight as few of them as possible. Yeah, so I'm going to take this flail. You can see the hand axe, uh, base damage 7, flail, base damage 10. Pretty big difference. So I'm going to use the flail. I'm going to... I'm going to train it up a bit. Okay, we got a slug. Actually, let's go to sling and just sling it down. You want to avoid um, fighting in water. Um, unless you're like a gigantic species, you're going to fumble in water. It's uh, Which basically means like you're going to miss a lot. And also moving in, in water is quite slow. Like if you see something to look at, if, if you look at where my cursor is, up by where it says time, this number in parentheses, that's how long your last move took. So you see how like when I move, it's 1.0. And then I go into water and I move, 1.6. So it's a, it's a pretty big delay. Okay, didn't miss anything. Let's go down to D4. Oh, there's Sigmund. I don't think I... I don't want to mess with him, actually. Um, there's no reason to force a fight with Sigmund. Like, on a lot of characters, I'll straight up just leave the floor uh, when I find Sigmund. And uh, on this one, I'm not even missing out on anything because I've already fully explored. So we'll just move away from him. Come back later when we're much stronger than him. Take his polymorph uh, wand. But yeah, a lot of the... A big part of, of this game is is threat assessment. Um, and you really just don't have to kill everything. So here's a non-trivial situation. We've got an adder, which is fast and poisoned. And we have an ogre who hits for a billion. Like, if you uh, XV him, you'll see. Hits for 40. That, that's a lot of damage. Alright, so I'm going to move back. And I'm going to go up. And since going down could potentially be death, I'm going to X, E, E. That will exclude these stairs. And now I won't accidentally go down them. Okay, so we hit Shift X, and I'm using the uh, going downstairs button to toggle through the downstairs. And we're going to go to the downstairs that's far away from Sigmund and is not where the ogre is. And go down. Okay, we got another ogre. Oh, I just noticed there's this uh, messaging down here that there's a, uh, a timed portal. Which is usually... Um, a boon to your consumables. Like, an ossuary is basically a bunch of consumables for usually not that hard of a of an area. They're really good. So, I don't have a, a scroll of revelation, which is basically a mapping scroll. I would use it, uh, if I had one, to get to that thing, to get to the portal before it runs out. But now I want to deal with this ogre, because... The other staircase has an ogre that's potentially right next to the stairs with an adder. And the other staircase is, like, in Sigmund territory. So if I can deal with this guy, I would like to. And I think I have the means. I have a scroll of poison, and I have range attacks. So I think I'm going to utilize them. Uh, I can even move through the poison if I had to, because I have resist poison. So yeah, I'm going to read poison scroll. It fills every square with poison. I don't know if he'll walk into this. But if he gets close, uh, I'm going to Berserk. So 
So you see, we 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 got him down to like half life. I think he's very wounded. <clears throat> but yeah, I'm gonna berserk here. Blam. Uh, let's go up. Thing about time portals is they do they do time out slower when you're not on the floor. So I'm gonna go up and rest here. And uh, I'm gonna stop auto exploring and manual explore in hopes of finding this this ossuary. Thing about manual explorer is you just have to be more careful about uh about like double tapping into something. Like if if you know if if you come upon a monster, you're more likely to accidentally like keep moving toward him instead of waiting. That's the thing you have to be careful about. Okay, bombardier beetle, which we talked about, and ribbon worm, which are like slow, but they throw nets at you. They can be dangerous in tandem with other monsters. Okay, we are on fire. Which you can see, it, de it dealt, dealt a pretty nice chunk there, because we got netted. Uh, let's see, I think I'm going to use Trog's Hand just to regen faster, because I don't want to rest while searching for this ossuary. So we got another messaging here. It says, you hear a very distant avalanche of sand. We're going to pay attention to that because if, like, we're right here on the map and we got very distant. If we move, like, say, west and it says it's distant, it means we got closer. Although it can be very, it can be difficult sometimes to, like, figure out where they are based on that, I find. All right, we found a ring of flight. I'll put it on. So why not? Okay, this is Temple. Temple's kind of like the first landmark if uh, if you're not, you know, playing a Berserker. If you're playing, like, a, a non-zealous uh, background, it's definitely, like, a, a milestone to find, find your god. There's Trog. And you can see I just double-tapped. It's very easy to double-tap when you're manual. Let's back up a little bit. See, now the Quokka is kind of, Quokka is kind of blocking for the ogre. Yeah, I'm going to berserk here. Pretty much want to berserk early on with any non-trivial enemy, assuming uh, you're not in a place where you're going to get punished for the for the downside afterwards. Okay, there's the ossuary. There's a wand too, but I am scared of this ossuary closing before I get in. <laughs> So we got an ambush here. I think we're fine anyway, but... One, uh... A button combination you can press to look at everything that's on the screen at once is Control plus X. It'll give you a list of everything. All these things pretty much are what they are, but it's useful, say, if it's a bunch of, like, normal enemies that could be wielding stuff, you can kind of do this and look and say, okay, this one enemy has, like, a distortion weapon I need to be careful, or this enemy's got nets, you know, kind of... Easy way to look at everything without having to XV everything. First move I like here is moving onto the staircase uh, out of here. And I think I'm going to... Oh, I just did the, the quiver command. If you hit shift Q, it lets you quiver abilities. Or let's quiver almost anything. I'm going to... Um, I ended up quivering javelins because I'm out of boomerangs. Um, 
probably going to end up switching to the axe just so I can attack multiple things at once. Yeah, let's, oops, switch to the axe. I think I'm fine here. This stuff is pretty trivial. Oh, nice. Okay, we've got a War Axe. War Axe is pretty much flail, uh, flail tier. I think I'm going to go back to the Axe. Um, my Maces and Axes are at the same exact... Are basically at the same level. So yeah, just going to go with axes. It might feel bad going back and forth, but it's like, all you can really do is uh, go with what you find and go with your current choices. And my current choice is I have a flail and a war axe that are both at the same level. And I prefer the war axe. Uh, i got an identify scroll. Let's ID something. So... These things hit fairly decently, but I'm kind of kind of in good shape against them at this point. Gotta be careful. If you find an early ossuary, the mummies might be non-trivial. They do hit for 20. Okay. So you can see, we, we got a bunch of potions. This is why it's like very nice to find an ossuary early. It's probably the best... Best loot to risk ratio as far as time portals go. But yeah, let's read our uh, our stacks. Okay, scroll summoning. You can see it, it basically summons monsters that could spawn on the floor. Okay, revelation. That's basically mapping, plus it kind of, it'll scry through walls and show you everything that's around you. All right, I think we're done here. Wanda Quicksilver. Wanda Quicksilver is very strong. It deals really good damage. Um, and it uh, it dispels enchantments. So if something's like hasted or mited, you can take them off it. And uh, yeah, also just does pretty good damage. And it also pierces through things. There's a jelly. These things... They can high roll you. That's the thing you need to be careful about. They can, uh, because they corrode. So if they happen to get a couple good corrodes on you and start hitting you before you, you know, before you start damaging them, uh, you can get into trouble. So definitely don't underestimate them early. Okay, there's another ogre. You can see he just whacked us for a bunch. Let's berserk. Another thing, anything uh, you have quivered, you can uh, quick fire by pressing P. So, like, the thing I have quivered, if I hit F, it'll target, like, the nearest thing, and then I can, you know, hit enter to throw it at it. Or if I just want to skip that step, I can just hit P, and it'll, it'll quick fire it right at him. Wow, a necrophage. That's old school. What are these even? I haven't seen one of these in so long. You can tell even the tile is kind of old school.
Okay, a bunch of altars. It's an orc priest. Orc priest, very dangerous early. Uh, sorry, orc wizards. Orc, orc wizards and orc priests are very dangerous early. Definitely, like, take mind of them. You can see he just hit me with a confuse, which basically, when you move, you have a, a chance to, like, not do what you want to do. Like, move in the wrong direction, swing at the wrong thing. Uh, I'm not going to use Trog's hand, because he, he's not really trapped in there. He's not in danger of really hurting me. Oh, yeah, I have flight. I forgot about that. I could have just walked over. Okay, I have axes at 10. Um, yeah, let's grab more fighting. So you can see now, 10 is kind of a, a place I look at for, for weapons like this, like the, the second tier of weapons, just because it gets you to where you're, um, you're swinging at, like, I don't want to go, go too deep on the timing system, but basically when you swing, it, it's only one turn, like one basic turn of normal speed. So it's less likely things will get multiple actions against you. You can see if you hit the uh, shift to the, the at symbol, it'll give you a breakdown of your, uh, your attack delay, your damage rating, and you know, what, uh, like, what's affecting it. Like, you'd see base, base damage, your strength affects it, your skill affects it, you know. And it's an easy way to compare. Like, if you find another weapon, you're not sure um, which is better. You can wield them, hit shift, hit shift two, and, and see, like, okay, this has uh, a damage rating of this, and it swings for about this fast, and you can make, like, a rough comparison. And basically, whichever is doing the most damage per turn is is the best weapon, and you want to like favor the weapon with the higher base damage if there's a tie. Okay. There's a scroll stack. Let's read that. Okay, we found fear. That's good. Let's take a look at that that shopping list again. We're gonna go buy some of this stuff. And uh, we're going to get the benefit of not only buying it, but also identifying it. So yeah, let's go travel here. Uh, I'm going to buy heal wounds for sure. Haste is good. And I could buy brilliance just to, just to ID it, but I think I'm just going to hold off. Because it, it's useless, but I will, buy, I, I will buy ID useless things just to ID them. But I think for now, I'll just hold off. Okay, so we came all the way back to D1, traveling to the shop. I'm going to hit Control-O. This gives us a dungeon overview, which basically says, like, these are the altars we found. We've been to Dungeon 4 of 15. Dungeon 4, 4 of 15, we found the temple, visited an ossuary. Gives you a list of your exclusions. This is useful, like, for going back to, like, now it's like, oh, yeah, it just reminded me Sigmund's here, and I'm strong, so I can go back and kill Sigmund. Grab his wand. You know, it gives you a list of everything, basically, of, uh, you know, like, mal uh, locations you've been to. So, we want to go to D3. A quick way to go there is just Control-G, D for dungeon, and then 3, and it'll quick travel there. Let's see if we can find, uh, there's Sigmund. Okay, got a wand of polymorph. Okay, now we want to go to D5. So control G, D for dungeon, 5. Ooh, bombardier beetles. Let's pull them back. Eventually, it'll become second nature, like how you want to move in this game. But it, it's really a lot of like moving back, back from things. <coughs> and you know, I use a lot of auto explore, but I also 
The safest thing to do really is to move outward from the staircases. So if auto explore takes me too far out of my zone, I'll I'll manual back to it. I haven't used the new ice spell yet, uh, said, but I've heard good things. Some people say it's OP. So, but no, I haven't had a chance to yet. I have another character currently where, um, um I might I might try it out. Okay, there's Menquar. He just snapped off a uh, a torment on us. We'll take a look at Menquar. This guy can be very dangerous. I mean, he moves slow, but he hastes himself. And uh, he has torment, which is always worth noting. It's basically... When something has torment, it just um, whacks you for half your life. There's things that can mitigate that like resist negative or just being immune to torment but we don't have access to that uh currently so i'm gonna move backwards he's slow so just moving backwards is if he's not hasted you can just walk away from him uh, no point in t just tabbing into him and possibly dying <laughs> yeah, I've heard some people say I was busted. I, I don't know. It might get nerfed before before next stable. Okay, there's Manquar. Uh I'm going to deal with him with, like, just Trog's hand and busting him down. But the first thing I'm going to do is just move northwest to break line of sight. Move up here. Trog's hand to negate uh, his, his pain ability. Or at least make it less likely. And let's berserk. No point in taking any chances. Um, I think I'm gonna grab like a quick two evocations. You can see I have zero. The first level or two of any skill you're using is very cheap. Like you can see, the cost is one point two compared to to fighting. So it's like. Basically, the question you ask yourself is, would I rather have one level of Evo, or would I rather have a sixth level of fighting? And, uh, yeah, the answer is Evo. So, even though fighting is better than evocations, I don't think a level of it is six times as good as the first level of evocations. So, we'll grab that. Okay, there's Egib. Egib is very dangerous. He often has, like, a, a dangerous wand. So you can see he has quick, Quicksilver. I'm going to break line of sight. This guy we're moving toward because he has a range ability. And if he hits me for any significant amount of damage, I'm going to Berserk him down, but no reason to yet. Okay, we got ID, scroll and noise, we can get rid of that. I see a dart, poison darts, that's good. So, I hit shift Q to quiver, and quiver these darts. And now, just like how I can, I can quick switch my weapon, I can also quick switch, uh, quick switch my quiver. The, the right bracket, uh, switches between quivered items. It's funny, it's like dialing a phone number. It's like when I just do it, I just kind of do it, like where I know where my finger goes, but then when I try to remember the exact key, it's very difficult. Oh, something is in Viz. Okay, I'm probably okay though. I have full life with only the wizard. I'm just going to keep swinging at him. Okay, we're on fire. Let's move around. Okay, we gained our quick two levels of Evo. Let's keep going on fighting. I'm 
I'm going to move forward here just because I want to be in this corridor area. Ring of protection from fire. Okay, we got all the we got all the fire protection. Acid dragon is very dangerous. You can see, it just hit. It, they hit for a lot, and they. Uh, they hit for a lot, and they can corrode you. Yeah, I think I'm gonna um, trog's hand here for regen. Okay, I'm going to use P to just quick fire these darts at this guy, and then back up a little bit. Ooh, Dire Flail Protection. I haven't found a shield yet, right? Nope. <clears throat> I could use that. Dire, fl dire Flail is much better than anything else I have. And is like right along our line. Just keep just keep switching back and forth, but it's so it's really not that big of a deal with the uh, with cross training and, and Minotaur apps. I think I'm gonna berserk this guy down. Yeah, Dire Flail is just it's a really good weapon when you find it early, like it's kind of like, uh, if it was one-handed, it'd be an endgame weapon, probably. Because it's just, it's got good base damage. It's got decent base damage, and it's very fast for, for its base damage. Like, 13 base damage and min delay of 0.6 is, is nice. And, uh, seeing as how I, I haven't found any, like... I haven't really found any armor. Uh, you know, any, like, auxiliaries. Like, I have very low AC... So, attacking with a protection weapon, you can see it gives you a temporary 7 AC. It's like doubles my AC. It's pretty big. So, you can see the the flail, or the war axe, had a base da uh, damage rating of 19. This is 24. It's a, it's a difference. So, yeah, let's use this. Let's grab some maces and go with that. Because it's just defensively and offensively, it's a it's a nice boost. All right, let's take a look at our shopping list. I think I'm gonna go buy ID uh, mutation. It's a very good potion. It's kind of a key potion to have ID'd because. Ooh, I have a three stack of it too. Let me drop some of this crap. Uh... It's a key potion to have ID because now I can quaff ID potions and not have to worry about getting a bad mutation. Like the only other quote unquote bad one is degen, which I guess is bad since I have four int. But if I have to quaff ID, it's uh, I don't have to worry about mutations anymore, at least. I'm going to back up one spot. You see how there's, like, now he's in the doorway? This is a good spot to be in, just in case something else comes along. Like, I saw a bear... That's, like, kind of hanging out. If I fight this guy, he gets me, like, kind of low on life somehow. I don't know. Uh, I can just shut the door. You know, there's, there's a chance I shut the door and, and I can regen without the uh, the monster getting close to me. Okay. Although it doesn't look like that's going to be an issue. Yeah, and you can see, like, this This weapon is uh, killing things a lot faster. Manual of pole arms. I'll, I'll put that on the list just in case. I don't know. I find, like, some busted pole arm. I might forget about that manual. Okay, we have boots. We're going to put those on, and we're going to enchant them. 
I recommend you cashing in your enchant armor scrolls on auxiliaries, boots, cloak, helmet, gloves. Uh, you don't want to die with those in your inventory. So I read uh, enchant armor and got my boots, and I have one left. A way to do your last action over again is the uh, tilde button. So I'm going to hit that. Hit tilde, and it uh, it does the same action and enchants my boots again. Manual staves. I think I'm very unlikely to use staves this game. Staves are, like, they're good because they're low investment for, like, a, a good weapon, but they are two-handed, and, uh, yeah, I just don't see it. Okay, we got Trog's next ability. The ability to call in reinforcements. You can see the, the cost is like in bars. So you can see Brother in Arms costs more than these two abilities, but it, it's strong. It summons a berserk, like giant or troll, to like fight next to you. Okay, we got bees. These things you really want to respect because there's often a lot of them. <laughs> so I'm going to back up. If a bunch up here, I do have a scroll of poison. Uh, a lot of the things that do poison damage are either, if they're not immune to poison, they're susceptible to poison a lot of the time. So you definitely want to take a look at them. Like, like you'd see, they're very dangerous because they, they're just super fast. Like, they're twice as fast as you, and they poison you. But you could see, like, resist poison X, they are susceptible to poison. But yeah, let's back up. Um, yeah, see, there's already... See? I'm backing up, and every time I backed up, another B has appeared. So... Let's re-poison. Um, yeah, I'm going to throw darts at these guys. Actually, I'm going to... I'm going to javelin in these guys. Just throw a javelin through the whole squad. Uh, let me see how fast I'm swinging. Swinging at 0.8. That's pretty good. Yeah, let's just keep going on fighting, I think. It's going to run out, and I'm going to have to fight a couple of these. I do have Scroll of Fear if this goes south. But let's see. Okay, it looks like it's going okay. If I lost, like, a little bit more health, I, I would consider uh, Trog's Hand and or Berserk. Okay, it's an Orc Priest. Let's back up. Definitely want to spend as little time in his line of sight as possible. There's another one. Got a Dagger of Venom. I'm going to pick that up just in case we want to poison something. Sleep cap. You want to be careful about these. You want to be careful about anything that incapacitates you. And uh, these guys can put you to sleep. At, they're kind of fragile. Like, at this point, I'm not worried about them. But early on, you want to be careful about them. And um, if they're next to things that are very dangerous, you want to be careful about them. Because they'll put you to sleep, and then their buddy will kill you. Okay, I don't think there's anything else. Let's go Enlightenment. Eh. Yeah, I'll just hold off. 
Enlightenment is like a, it gives you flight and willpower. I just don't need willpower on this character, even though IDing stuff is nice. But I think I'm okay for now. All right, let's go down. I want to keep an eye out for Lair at this point. Um, Lair is the generally the first non-dungeon branch you'll go into. And uh, it can be found anywhere between 8 and 11. So, what are we on? Oh, we're on Dungeon 7, so I still got a floor to go. What's that guy got going on? I just saw him. So if you hit Control-P, um, it'll show you, like, your your messaging log in case you miss something. Okay, it's a plus four war axe. I thought it might be branded. What's this guy got? Short sword of protection. Okay. You can tell, like, when the weapon looks, like, a little, like, shaded, like a different color, it's it's branded in some way. Branded or enchanted. But yeah, let's let these guys get close. <clears throat> okay. ID to Potion of Invis. That's nice. There's a Centaur. These guys you definitely want to be careful of. You definitely want to break line of sight. As much as you can until they're adjacent. Okay, Ice Beast. Let's pull him back. Should be okay against him. <laughs> or not. Okay, we're alright. He whacked us for a nice 20% at least. Oh, there's a Centaur. Yeah, let's go up. Let's pick a different staircase. Okay. Got some wands now. Sky Beast. These things can be dangerous early on, especially. They, uh... They go in viz... So basically the way you want to fight them is move away from them until they are in line of sight. Okay, this is a ghost fault. The thing about ghost faults is don't go into them. That's all I can say. They, uh, they're they almost always at a depth for you when you first find them. I mean, I could force this, you know, devise a plan to get in here, but it's just not necessary. Like, It's one thing if it has like some insane item then maybe it's worth using, like, some consumables on. But generally speaking, you can just leave them alone uh, and come back later. You know, come back when you're much stronger than what's in there. Because this is a collection of non-trivial enemies, and, you know, uh, the ghosts tend to be pretty strong, too. Especially if this one doesn't even have spells. He's not too bad, but... A lot of them do. This guy's also very dangerous. He he doesn't like him himself isn't dangerous, but the things he summons are very dangerous, so you definitely wanna respect this guy. I'm gonna move backward, break line of sight, let him get adjacent. And uh Okay, he's starting to summon stuff. I'm gonna berserk him down. With, with summoners, the stuff they summon is only there for as long as they're there. So if you can kill them, they, they'll go away. You always, you almost always want to target the thing that's summoning and not the stuff it's summoned. Um, yeah, even now, like, do I want to grab armor? Oh, I haven't found much armor. Let me take a look. Okay, I actually just I saw my I saw myself gain an AC, so I, I think I'm gonna I might just leave it at that. But let me take a look. Uh, 
This guy's got poison darts? Okay. I'm just gonna go upstairs. Work off all this slow and poison. What's this guy got? Short sword of execution. See, this is something that can kill you. Uh, and you won't even, you won't even notice. Like, if, if you just tab into stuff, you will eventually die to a guy with an electrocution weapon. So, I'm still gonna fight him, but just be mindful of, uh, of it. I'm gonna hang out on these stairs. Pull him up. Summons cannot go upstairs, so it's kind of an easy way to, uh, to get rid of summons is just to hang out on stairs and when he summons go up them all right so i'm going to use utilize this info bot you see i have beam basically if you want to get this in your uh in your chat box just go to someone else who's using it and hit uh exclamation point subscribe they can be useful but the way i'm going to see how much armor I want. If you look at, like, if you look at the armor you're wearing, you see how it says base base armor rating 5? You just add all that up. So I'm wearing that. I'm wearing boots. All the auxiliary armor is base armor 1. So my total base armor is 6, right? I'm going to do the command AC6. So it, it takes... 3.67 armor to gain an AC. Uh, which, I don't know. Like, gaining three levels of armor just to get an AC is not that great. Yeah. I think I'm just going to keep going on... Uh, on fighting... Okay, all the rings of protection I need. I've already got two, and I've only got two hands, so I'm going to turn this off. If you hit a uh, backslash, it brings up this list of items that are recognized. You can hit it again to see items that aren't recognized. But this allows you to turn off things, so you see how it says ring of fire? I'm going to turn off the auto pickup on that. Okay, this guy's got a morning star and he's got boomerangs. So let's back up. Can drop uh, that flail. This guy's got a whiff of electrocution. I'm gonna uh, trog's hand. I don't want to get confused around that guy. He's only an orc, but still, like, I really respect electrocution. It can deal a lot of damage. Okay, I think that's it for this floor. Let's drag this guy up. Definitely, these kobold brigands, they always have either poison or uh, curar darts. And, uh, yeah, you definitely want to be careful about that. This curar is... I mean, I'd be very happy if they had it just because I, I would want it. <laughs> but um, you want to be careful. It, it, it can really mess you up, it slows you down, and poisons you. Oh, wow, look at this. This is such a cool store. It's basically, like, all these, like, like great uh, base types, but, like, uh, slightly damaged. Gold Dragon Armor is great. It's usually what you want to be wearing by the end of the game if, if you can actually find it. So I'm going to throw that on the list. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Gold Dragon Armor is nice. It basically gives you... Resist fire, resist cold, resist poison, and it's a ton of AC.
Okay. Still no lair. Um, let's go by Potion of Resistance. That's something we can use. Okay. These are the situations where you want to not do anything right away. We came downstairs, and there's a pyromancer right next to us. These things are very dangerous. This is something you don't often even see in dungeon, necessarily. Like, it's something you see in elf. Yeah. Yeah, Bolt of Fire does a shitload of damage. I think the first thing I'm going to do is pull him up um, so I don't have to deal with other things. And if I do decide to teleport, it'll be on an explored floor. I think the next thing I'm going to do is put on my other ring of protection from fire. And... Uh, Trog's hand... I'm on fire. I'm going to move. Okay, he blinked. I think we're just going to go up the stairs and, and regen to full health. What's he poly into? Glowing Orange Brain, Manticore, or Yaktor? Um, could try paralyzing him. Although that might take a few shots. I think we're just going to throw darts at him, and if, if it doesn't work out, uh, I'll go back upstairs. Okay, we poisoned him a little bit. Alright, we got him. Yeah, that's definitely a monster you want to be careful with. Let's pick a different staircase. Oh, right, they're all kind of next to each other. Alright, so, yeah, we're going to stair dance. Meaning we're going to keep pulling stuff up. Here's a situation where we're surrounded. You definitely want to move here. Um, moving, things will hit you as you move, but it's just it's just worth it to move to a better location and fight somewhere else than to keep getting hit. So let's move here where only one thing can hit us. Let's Trog's hand to regen. Let's grab, like, two more maces. And let's pick a different staircase. Even though they are close together, going down the same one is probably not great. Let's pull two guys up. All right, we're confused, but we can still go up the stairs. So, quaffing curing, I don't have it ID'd. Although, I'm very tempted to just quaff ID, but I don't know if DGen can... Can DGen give me stat zero? I'm not sure. Yeah, I'm not sure what the low roll is on DGen. I'm gonna, I'm gonna avoid that. Oh, a Hydra. Those are dangerous. So now we have a situation because all the staircases are here. So no matter which one I come back down, they will always be uh, somewhat next to a Hydra and also these Orc Wizards. So let me see if I can concoct a plan to deal with this uh, before going back up. I think the first thing I'm going to do is Trog's hand so I don't get confused. Reading summoning might be a thing I do. I could also summon a, uh, a brother in arms, although the failure rate isn't great. Yeah, I think I'm going to read summoning here and see what I get. 
Okay, that's a lot of stuff. I think this is good. Uh, let's use Wanda Roots. Wanda Roots is a 3x3, three three, uh, like, grabbing spell. Like, it, it basically, in this area that you see that's yellow, it'll grab everything, hold it, as long, you know, as long as uh, they don't struggle out, and it, it tanks their EV. So I'm going to do that just because I don't want to wait or move toward it. It just seems better. Okay. Yeah, it's one of those situations where, like, a lot of times, dangerous situations, you just want to go up the stairs and, and go down different stairs, but that was not an option here. All right, I guess now I'll grab I'll grab some armor. Uh... And basically, I'm just noting my armor. Like, right now it's 16 with, uh, ooh, a Morningstar of Venom. Right now it's 9 with, uh, you know, without Dire Flail's Protect brand, it's 9. So when it hits 10, I'll reevaluate training armor. But uh, I think I'm going to use this Morningstar on anything that's uh, susceptible to poison. Oh, interesting. There's Hat of the Alchemist. It's basically just a collection of all the resists. That's something I could end up wearing at some point. Especially on a Minotaur. They have horns, so they can't wear helmets. Mm -hmm. Okay, this, this is a lair right here. So, in this game, like it, it's definitely not a bad idea to just go into lair when you find it. Um, cause this game does have shafts. You can get shafted once, once per branch and I haven't yet been shafted. So if I keep exploring, I can potentially get shafted down to like, you know, floor 12 or something and get into trouble. The downside of not exploring is, you know, if I pull stuff out and need to ex escape, it can be a bad teleport. So you have to kind of weigh those things like... I think on this character, I'm going to just explore the rest of the level, and then I'll go into Lair. You know, there's also the danger of, like, uh, going into Lair and kind of stair-dancing stuff, and you come out and something dangerous wanders over from unexplored territory. Okay, this Kabul does have Curar, so let's be mindful of that, and also be happy that we're getting Curar. Yeah, this this is a very nice item. Poisons and slow stuff. Really good against, say, a two-headed ogre. I'm going to immediately just throw it at this guy. Slow him down. <laughs> Poison him up real good. These guys, they hit for a ton of damage. Like, it's basically two ogres stapled together. 42, 35. These things will kill you very quickly if you don't respect them. Okay, and I think we're ready to head into Lair now. My quiver, which is something I don't even think about, and I couldn't find it because it's a. Uh, once I start trying to think about it, it, it's difficult. Yeah, this this run was really almost too blessed to be educational. We just got our stuff was too good. Yeah, I figure, like, doing these, like, even even if you're not new, um, you know, a lot of times you just, you know, even I miss stuff as far as, like, shortcuts and keys and, and things like that. So hopefully everyone can get something out of these. Yeah, exactly. I think I think getting shield resistance is like when I'm most often like I, I 
I think that's the one time where I didn't use, you know, where I won't use Hat of the Alchemist. I've had games where I didn't use Shield of Resistance just because I had all my resists. Like, you find an early, like, gold dragon armor and, like, some crazy ring that gives all your resists. And now you're like, well, like, I just ended up using a Shield of Protection over a Shield of Resistance. All right, y'all. Um, yeah, I'll be back uh, sometime this week with another video. Not sure what I'm gonna do. We'll uh, we'll talk about it in the Discord. Let's see. Uh, see if I want to do another one of these. I kind of do. Like this was it was pretty fun. But yeah. All right, y'all. Have a good day. Thanks for hanging out with me. Uh, hope hope you learned something. And uh, take care.